after my test drive the other day, I felt confident. So I went and took the truck out again. And after about three miles, it died. So I had it towed home. And this is what I'm dealing with in the fuel tank. This is just like a fine, rusty silt. It's so fine, in fact, that it's not even getting caught up in coffee filters. So that fine, silty rust could be clogging my fuel filter, but I changed it. And when I changed it, that didn't do anything. I found the factory rubber hose to the pump has some pretty good cracks in it, and it's on an older hose. So I changed it, because change is good sometimes. So now I've got it running out here. I've got it idling, and it sounds great. I fixed the idle mixture issue and idle speed issue. I fixed the rocker arm noise issue. So it's idling great, it runs great. However, I have this, this is half full. I can get air bubbles out of it. And I can fill this back up. Just like that. And it's mostly full. And look at the air bubbles just going right back into it. Somewhere in my fuel system, I am sucking air into it. So there's a leak somewhere. thinking that if I'm getting bubbles in and out of here that this is the problem so we're gonna start here since I don't see any other leaks and I only put this in so I can see how cloudy and crappy the fuel is and I know how cloudy and crappy the fuel is I have silk in the tank so I don't really need to see more silt in the tank I guess so let's take these hoses off here it is running much better I've got it pretty much dialed if I can just keep it from dying after three or four miles. Uh, remove that. And here in a couple minutes, we're going to try to test this to see if air is getting past those gaskets. And it should be 11 sixteenths. And I think this is a half inch brass fitting. There we go. Now the oddball thing here is that this fitting is a 5 8 So now I've got to get this to go back onto there without cross-threading it. Which is not always easy, but I think we've got it. 5 8 Yeah, that's threading. Also, I found out uh, when I filled the gas tank up that that O-ring I put back on did not seal. So, uh, I do have to pull the bed back and I've got to take that lock ring and O-ring back out in a couple days when I get my parts in. Anyways, it's $10 worth of parts I probably should have bought in the first place. But, I don't think the silt that's getting past the filters is clogging anything. I think it's in suspension and it's okay. Um, I mean, it might be taking that filter up, but I can still blow through the filter even when I'm getting stuff at it like that, so. All right, um, that is back on. Kind of want to get it off the water pump though, because I don't need it to vapor lock. There we go, close enough. Okay. Let's put this back on, put the window back on, and we'll let it idle again. We'll start it back up and let it idle. And we'll go test this little fuel filter we got and see if we can figure anything out on it. That's back on. Let's start it. I mean, it starts right up. And it sounds pretty good. So, let's grab all of our parts here. Let that sit there and think about what it's done while we go in the garage and maybe try to test this glass filter. Okay, my thoughts on this are, if it's leaking around these two seals, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cap off both ends. I've got some rubber caps that seem to seal it pretty tight, and we're gonna put it down in this water and see if we get bubbles out of it. I'm kinda of hoping to see bubbles. Or if I pull it out and we've got fluid in it, 
that's also good. Okay, let's tip it over. Hmm, well, I'm not seeing any signs of anything in there, really. It's a shame. I was really kind of hoping this cheap glass filter was my air problem. Okay, got a fresh piece of 516's hose. Let's see if we can blow air into it. No, we cannot. Hmm. Well, that kind of rules that out. Um, I did remove it from the system because I guess it could be hose or hose clamps that I have right there uh, as well. Let's put it under load and see if we can get to do it under load. Got it in reverse. Give it gas. Nope, it just pulls through the brakes. Which actually feels more powerful than it has in a while, but... No, it just drives through the brakes, but it's it loads up just fine. We're gonna replace this one last piece of rubber hose um, that I haven't replaced yet. And then we're just gonna have to continue to drive it. But I do have my doubts about that gas tank as well. So let's get this 5 16 fuel hose out and hopefully that piece is long enough. I don't know. We're gonna find out here in a minute. Driver. Where's my screwdriver? I can't find it. There it is. Okay, let's go put this 5 16 fuel hose on and see what happens. I think I've got a good enough angle on this. This is the last piece of fuel hose I have not replaced. Uh, so, it being a 20 something year old hose, I don't see any physical leaks, but I guess it could be pulling air. So, we'll pull it off of here. There we go. Keep that filter up out of the way so we don't drain it completely, I guess. There we go. Uh, and, of course, bottom one's gonna be spring clamp. Awesome, I'll be right back. Okay, right down here at the bottom, you might not be able to see, but there is a spring clamp that is about to spring its last spring. There we go. Now we'll try to get this hose off of this steel line that's down at the frame. And you gotta have rubber hose going from frame to engine because the engine moves around. It's on rubber mounts. It does wiggle and wobble and the frame does not or should not. So, um, that hose definitely has some cracking. Could it be enough to be pulling air into my system? Maybe, all right, well. Let's put our new 516s on and see what happens, I guess. One clamp. Every time you take a vehicle that's been sitting for a long time, you have a lot of oddball issues. Just be prepared to deal with that. I sort of am, I sort of not. Just I'd rather be out driving it, but every time I drive it, if it wants to die on me, that's not very good either. Okay, that's tight. One clamp to go. It is a 3 8 fitting on this filter, so getting a 5 16 fuel injection hose onto it is a little tough, but eh, it'll work. Tighten it back up. And now I can't even see if I've got the problem fixed because I took out the rubber hoses and my clear filter. So I really don't know, but we're gonna trust that it is fixed for now. That's all I really can do for today on the fuel system. Uh, I'm gonna have to continue to take it on short little trips and see what happens. You know, I'm fighting this silt that's in the tank, but it seems to get past the fuel filters. And if it's getting past the fuel filters, it's getting in the carburetor. It's not clogging jets because it's too fine. I mean, it's going through coffee filters without really stopping, so. The silt is bad. I don't know if that's the issue. Um, I also removed this clear line or this clear inline strainer. It didn't seem to be doing much and it may have actually been causing air bubbles even though when I tested it, I didn't get air bubbles. Um, replaced all the rubber lines on it today and remove the rubber lines that were included when I put this in. So it's back to steel line from the carburetor to the fuel pump, one rubber line from pump to frame, steel line all the way back to the plastic fitting at the tank. 
So right now, the only place it could be pulling air is that plastic line, which I can't replace with a factory plastic line. So if that's bad, I'm gonna have to do rubber hose, I guess, from the tank to the steel line. But I'm betting on old rubber line that despite not having physical leaks, it was cracked, um, could have been pulling air in. And I didn't replace the pump yet. I guess that would be the, the next, next step is replace the fuel pump. So I'll test drive it uh, a couple more times and hopefully we'll move on. If not, the next episode will be a fuel pump. But I do have some parts in stock, finally, that I'd like to install eventually if I can get this thing to run. That's all for today. I'm going to go test drive a few more times, short trips, and hopefully it keeps running. See you next time.